Where do I even stand? Like in the, oh my god, she had babies. I have a family of bunnies in the garden, and I love bunnies. I love cute, cuddly, adorable things, and I have no qualms with them being in my garden. Because as I've said before, if something isn't eating your stuff, it's really not part of an environment. So, yay! And really, the bunnies aren't bad. I've seen her in here, and she's kind of chews the bottoms of my leaves. I don't have any lettuce. I don't have any spinach that she can really get to. The kids, I know, they can't hop up into the raised beds. So, I don't know. That's, that's pretty heartwarming. Hey, welcome back to A Garden Named Bill. Wow, this is being filmed on a Sunday night for a premiere on a Monday morning. And it's beautiful out right now. The weather has been summer weather here. We've got high 80s and 90s, but it's dry, it's not humid. At night now it's 6.30 and it feels like it's in the mid-70s. So I'm having to water every other day here, you know, with a couple um, buckets of water, but that is quite all right. The heat crops are growing like crazy. Let me give you your overview shot. Like I said, the hot weather crops are loving it. The corn is growing nicely. It's about two weeks behind, but that's okay. My zucchini over here are suffering. We'll get to them in a little bit and talk about why. This is a birthday gift. I've got three citrus trees. What? Uh, the peas here are yellowing. I think I'm going to pull those out and do a second seeding of them. You know, we've got maybe the better part of three months, depending on how cold the fall gets. I think I should be able to get a second harvest of peas. They'll be significantly less than this, but still, I'm going to give it a try. And... We pretty much end with the raspberries, even here at night in this frame, you can see, check it out, I got a ton of them that are ripe and ready for harvesting. I've already harvested a little over 1.2 kilograms. I already mentioned this in the overview, but this week for our week ahead, I'm going to take these out and uh, take off the pods that I've been holding on to to plant for a second round. I don't know if it's too soon for me to use these and plant them in the ground or if I should use seeds from my seed packet. Let me know what you think. Anyways, um, I might do some seed saving. Otherwise, I'm going to add some compost here, loosen it up, and plant again. It's major harvest time here for the garden. As you can see, any of these black dots behind me are raspberries. These are ready to go. And what you can't see so well, um, I've got my original kind of raspberries. They kind of hide themselves under the leaves. They're all nice and ripe. Uh, I get, you get two waves of harvesting. On the old canes, you're harvesting them now, and on the new ones, you'll harvest them in another six to eight weeks. And the gooseberry, I've got probably 65% of the plant left to harvest. And actually, the stuff that I've left on, the berries are turning pink, and they come right off. So these are ripe enough to eat um, just raw. You've got a real mild flavor. Actually, they're even kind of sweet when you let them go long enough. The ones that I harvested before were nice and green. Great for making jam. This past week, I don't know if I'm still in front. This past week, I made six kilograms worth of jam. Wonderful. My first time ever doing jam, and they turned out wonderful. Wonderfully, I made a raspberry gooseberry jam and a strawberry rhubarb gooseberry jam. I was just going to be rhubarb gooseberry, but I had 200 grams worth of strawberries left over that we had gotten from the farmer's market, so I'm like, ah, I'll throw them in. And it was a nice added last minute touch. Hey, how's this for a camera angle? I wanted to really give you a good perspective on the corn, well over knee high. That's why I get that this is maybe two weeks behind, even though it started off really slowly. I've got two different kinds of corn here. This is almost exclusively the blue corn that I got from MI Gardener, and this is just the popcorn that we buy from the store and we eat ourselves. We'll see. That's probably a hybrid seed, uh, if I had to guess. So who knows how it's going to actually come up if we get ears at all. But it's growing nicely, and even if I don't get any corn harvest out of it in the months to come, I'll still be able to use the stalks for interesting um, harvest time decoration. This second seeding of radishes is almost ready to be harvested. I pull things aside, you can see they're not quite golf ball size yet, and since I'm not in a rush, I'm going to milk it and let these guys grow as big as they can get. 
My squash was devastated by squash bugs. I have come out time and time again and taken tape, wrapping it around my hands, going underneath the leaves and getting off eggs. And I just, I didn't get ahead of it soon enough. I, I did it two days ago and I've got, I don't know, a couple hundred eggs that are still out here. The little buggers are crawling around. That's why this looks, all these leaves are yellow and disgusting. I did harvest one zucchini before it was too late. Didn't have any monster zucchinis this year like I always have in the past. Uh, really pretty disappointing and I'm considering just ripping these plants out. End the life cycle for the um, squash bugs, you know what I mean? Because none of the zucchini flowers are able to grow. I've got a little one here and I, it already feels like it's rotting from the inside. You know, it's not growing how it should. Really kind of a bummer. On a positive note though, I have three new plants and these are fruit trees. Uh, they will be dwarves. I'm only going to let them go maybe five or six feet tall. This is an experiment. These are, these are citrusy tropical trees. I have a um, lime, a Meyer lime, excuse me, a Meyer lemon, a key lime, and a tangerine. And uh, these are sec in their second year. They were planted, I think, uh, July of 2018, and I just got them from Stark Brothers. They were a birthday gift from my mom. Thanks, mom. And I've named them. This is Omar, Guldum, and Raja. And if you get the references, 10 points to you. Um, they require a little bit more water, like an inch every two days, something like that, for a while. But they took immediately, no sort of color discoloration in the leaves. They love the hot weather, as you'd imagine. And once things cool down, they will be living in our southern facing windows inside. And I really can't wait to watch them grow, and I'm so excited for the first flowers. Citrus flowers smell amazing. Um, and it's great. I don't think they have any natural predators up here in Wisconsin, you know? <laughs> so nothing's been eating them. That's a good start. I'm really, really pleased. You can also see in this frame more asparagus fronds blowing in the wind. Uh, I think before I said maybe seven of them survived. Now I can clearly say that eight of them have because with this heat more shoots have come up um, in places as many as four in, from one plant. So that's good. Good progress on the asparagus. All of my tomatoes are doing really well. This, the two on this side that I'm single stemming are pushing the five foot mark, which is wonderful. And I think it might be just a little bit below frame, but you can see in my hands, this is a Rapunzel tomato. tomato. Um, this, this clump over here is ripening. In fact, I had my first tomato this morning. Oh, so satisfying. You guys that have gardens, you know there's nothing like a straight from the garden fresh tomato. Um, the specialty peppers are all doing really well. In fact, I could harvest banana peppers and jalapeno peppers, so I'll probably do that this coming week. And the green peppers are finally setting on buds. So in the squash ish section here. I've got the butternut squash and the coconut squash. Uh, what uh, Decorative gourds, dwarf watermelon, and cantaloupe. They're all doing really well, particularly the squashes, these two right here. Uh, we're coming up pushing four foot on this. This is growing at least a foot a week in height. So uh, by the end of the July, this will be cresting over. Both of these should be, which is wonderful. The flowers are all looking good. And those squash bugs that I had um, behind the camera here and the zucchinis, because they're so far apart, the squash bugs haven't uh, made their way over to these yet. I've been pretty meticulous at looking underneath the leaves and trying to mitigate that to the best of my abilities. And so far, so good. Um, let's just hope that keeps up and we can have a healthy growth and good harvest of all of these things that we got going on here. It is fun to just keep coming around and weaving all the leaves in and out. Very satisfying. The potatoes really look weird. They've all fallen over. They're kind of starting to yellow. I'm going to wait until they get more yellow before I start harvesting. I haven't broken into the ground to see if I have any new potatoes or what the harvest is going to be. We're going to leave that open for a surprise. Cauliflower is doing wonderfully. All of these are bigger than a baseball. And whoop, come on, we can focus. Can we focus? Oh, this is such a great entertainment. Yep, anyways, uh, this is time for me to wrap these. So that's another week ahead task. But I am going to wrap them tight with their leaves to make sure that they stay white and don't get leggy and yellow and nasty. 
So if I put you here, I know it's a weird camera angle. This is one of those objects in mirror, closer than they appear kind of thing. Well, maybe not exactly that. Anyways, this is not as big as it appears from your perspective, but still this is about five feet and the other one's four and the one behind me is pushing four too. These are the best looking sunflowers of all those seeds that I've randomly thrown around the garden. Uh, fingers crossed, but I think for sure we're going to get some nice flower heads off of these. With all this heat, they are growing like crazy. The carrots are ready for thinning. They're you know, this nice confluent chunk here. If I reach in, oh my gosh, there was a baby bunny. Oh, will you let me touch you? Hello, hello. Mom got in through one great big crack. So either the babies will, oh yeah, get out through the fencing as it stands, or they'll get big and they'll go out through that crack too, like mama. Whatever. I don't care. I love them to death. They're so cute. Oh my god, focus on the rabbit. Oh, you silly camera. Hi. Hi, Bun Bun. He's a baby Bun Bun. Leaving the Bun Buns alone for a little while and focusing on different parts of the garden. The beans have all crested over me. This one has a, a stalk that, if it were straight, it would be about 10 feet long, but I've curved it around as much as I'm going to. This one probably is going to be the same. I've got lots of flowers, no beans as of yet, but it's coming soon. If anybody wants to leave me a suggestion for how to get the bunnies to come up to me and like eat from my hand or say hello, I really want to do it. You let me know. Oh, they're just so cute. So that's one of the things about being a gardener, I don't, I don't mind rabbits. I like animals. I, uh, I really enjoy nature. And if I can just, you know, be a friend to things that are in my garden, that just makes me so happy. I wish I had something that I know he'd eat. Like if I could pull, if there were beans, I'd pull off a bean. If there were carrots, I'd pull out a carrot. They're all so thin. Oh my gosh, he's so tiny. Hi there. So what are you snacking on? Oh, you're just snacking on a weed. See, it's beneficial to have the rabbits in here. That's why I've had so few weeds. They just snack on them. Okay, he is a meter and a half in front of me, sitting up on his hind haunches, and he is sniffing the carrot leaf that's dangling over. Way too small to make it up into the garden beds. Which I guess is another pro of doing raised beds. For what it's worth. Yeah, he's going away. Oh well, my enticing beet leaf here didn't really do much. Oh, so cute. Just so cute. I'm glad he feels safe here. You know, maybe that's nice too. I really, I don't get birds that come in here. What are the real predators to rabbits? Maybe bigger animals, but I think in, in our area, like birds of prey, they got so much to hide in in here and there's no way a bigger predator can get in. They're safe. That's good. That's good. Oh, that's so exciting. We should just wrap this up. Okay, I lied. I had to give you one more close-up shot of these raspberries because they're so amazing. And I can literally just eat them. Mm. This is kind of a last addition to the overview, but in this corner of the garden, all of the tiger lilies have opened up and they're spectacular. Well, that might have been a boring and strange garden tour for you, but it was totally exciting for me because I'm growing bun buns and I'm so happy. And no, I will not be cooking any hazen pfeffer in the near future. I just want to hug them and pet them and love them. So what surprises have you found in your garden this year? Like my rabbits? Um, you just never know. Hey, thanks to everybody who submitted videos and watched the viewer submitted video from last week. I liked it a lot. It didn't get nearly as much traffic as I was expecting, expecting, but 
whatever. Those guys are pretty great. You should check it out if you haven't. And uh, that's it. Happy growing, everyone. I have to go inside and tell my wife about the bunny rabbits. Bye. Hop to it. Get it?